Hello, thank you for tuning in. You're listening to another episode of A Band of Gamers Podcast. This is episode 189. We are a video game and music podcast. Two hobbies in separate segments. Side A video games, side B music. For show notes, links, and conversation, over to abandagamers.com slash 189. I'm Joel, your MC, one of your three co-hosts. Joining me on this podcast journey from across the globe, usually, but this time in the same room. All three of us together in Vancouver. First, the man who lives here in this beautiful city, Shane. Hey, Shane. Hey, man. This is this is great. This is a real treat, not only for us, but also for you. You're, you're getting the three of us all met up for the very first time here in Vancouver. And usually in Birmingham, England, but with us here in Vancouver. It's Carl. Hey, Carl. Hello. Hello. Yeah, this is crazy because normally we can only see each other kind of from like the, the neck down, maybe like, you know, shoulder height. And, and then we're getting the full, the full month here. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> How awkward is this? <laughs> yeah. beautiful. It's both beautiful and awkward. Yep. Inside a video games this episode, we've got plenty of news. The Sony next-gen console, presumably the PlayStation 5, was kind of revealed, sort of. Maybe. By Mark yeah. Cerny in a Wired interview. MGC recap, a little bit of that. Xbox One S All Digital Edition. More information was announced on that console. What we're playing... Carl will talk about EGX Rezzed, and then we're going to drink some beers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not open yet, but they're in the fridge. We're going to grab them, and we've got some special treats that we'll be trying for the first time on the show. And in Side B Music, not much this episode. We didn't do a recommended record, but maybe we'll start to talk about which one we'll recommend for next time. So how's it going, guys? How's this week been? What do you think? We've been together. So Carl flew into Chicago on Thursday, picked him up at the airport, came to Milwaukee that same night. We spent Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday mm-hmm. at Midwest Gaming Classic. Then we flew out to Shana on Monday morning. We got there Monday afternoon. It's now Thursday afternoon. So we've had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then today together. How do you think it's gone? Quickly. Really quickly. <laughs> it doesn't seem five minutes ago. It's been a week now since I flew in, and well, my first flight. And yeah, it's flown by. Just lots of fun. Real good company, good beers, man. Yeah, this is its just over too soon. Agreed. Yeah, this has gone by really, really quick. Yeah, it has. Can't believe it. tomorrow's the last day. Could be emotional. Is it? Nah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lots of tears. <laughs> nah. They might be wiping a stray one away, you know, holding back a sniffle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a fun week. It's been really nice to be together. It's been a blast. It's getting the three of us together for the first time. Is, you know, I, mean, I met you last year, Joel, and we had, we had fun, we had a great time. Uh, but like this time around, the three of us, it is just like old buddies hanging out. Man. It's, it's great. It's super, super fun. We've done some fun stuff. Yeah, we have. And you get to know each other a little bit better. All those little uh, goof, yeah. goofy personality ticks and... All the quirks. The snoring. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah the snoring. No, I'm raising my hand. Even, no, don't even get me on the snoring, boys. Come on. The snoring's a rotation, though. Yeah, we, all took, probably, we, we all take part a little bit. Yeah, yeah. everybody participated yeah. in snoring. <laughs> This week. <laughs> All right, well, I guess let's get right into the show here. First off, the Midwest Gaming Classic, a quick recap of that. That was this past weekend. Bigger and better than ever, as seems to be the, the routine now every year. Gets a little bit bigger. Yeah. At the Wisconsin Center, downtown Milwaukee, and the pinball and arcade room was twice the size. So that was different. We ran the music stage like we normally do, and by running it, literally, I think we're running around the whole time. Well, you were. You were running around a lot more than I was. Yeah, I checked my steps. I don't usually look at steps, but out of curiosity, <laughs> I looked at my steps like, woo, a lot of running around. But Midwest Gaming Classic was a lot of fun. I don't know. We've talked about it a lot over the years. I don't know what more I can say from what we haven't already said about it, but it's a great retro gaming event with a lot of good friends and people that show up. Yeah. And it goes by way too quick, and we actually work pretty hard during it. Then it's over. Absolutely. I mean, from my point of view, obviously I came back last year and it was a bigger event than I thought it would be. You know, it was quite impressive. And uh, and this year again, you know, it was even bigger still. You know, they, they switched the halls around, so the video games and the pinball were in the, a huge, huge room. Uh, it was absolutely crazy and some, some good stuff there. You know, I actually got to play more this year than I did last year. Uh, yeah, I'm just overwhelmed um, by just the event as a whole. And we've got snow again. Yeah, it snowed on Sunday again. Uh, highlight of the show, for me, probably Attack on Mars, besides the stage, which was a blast. 
But Attack on Mars, that pinball machine was pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a great table. I've snuck, snuck away a couple of times to play more and try and get a better high score. It's uh, it's a super table because you've got realistic little plastic flying saucers in there, like a big one in the middle and, and kind of two on each side uh, around the sides of the table. And you have to destroy the alien spaceships as they attack different countries uh, around the world, different like you know capital cities and stuff. Great table, really fun. Uh, I think the pinball on the whole was really good. You know, it was they had some good tables and a couple of new ones which I hadn't played. They had uh, the Adams Family, um, Batman, Monsters. Uh, there was a new table called the Black Knight, which was the debut pinball table for this year. That was hard, <laughs> really, really tough one to to get around, but very, very cool. Uh, you kind of had the knight sat in the middle of the table and he was defending a couple of the lanes, and you had to kind of get it around him a couple of times in order for him to lift his shield up or lift his mace up and yeah very interactive i love how these tables are they have a lot of stuff going on on the table itself and then you've got all the digital stuff going on there as well They're really really cool of course we got to see a lot of great people quick couple shout outs tommy oh, arcade yeah. got to hang out with him thursday night at the pre-party and then go out for drinks after we shouldn't have gone out for drinks yep to the safe house <laughs> that was fun uh, tim paulin was yep. there with his sons i didn't see his sons but it was great to hang out with Tim, no, had a couple actually, beers yeah. with him. Dave, Bosnick, yeah. Mike B was there. Lots of great people. And, of course, the usual cast of characters who run the event, all those great volunteers and Dan Lucid and Gary Heil and everybody else. Shane, we sent some pictures home or texted them to you. Anything exciting there for you? What would you, if you got to go to Midwest Gaming Classic, what would be first up on your plate? Without being biased, I'd say the... Uh, the abandoned gamer stage itself when the music goes down yeah it was a gr- absolute great setup this year they had a couple really neat uh milwaukee uh billboards kind of postcardy you know old school uh, you know ashbury park type uh type deals going on the side of the stage the stage that looked look phenomenal and a lot of chairs there every time you send me pictures lots of people checking it out look like a, a really great place to be any certain parts of the event you'd check out Oh, oh, pinball tables for sure. Pinball? Yeah, I love the pinball tables, man. Attack from Mars is one of my one of my favorite tables. I've never ever had an opportunity to play one in the uh, in the flesh. So that would be that would be phenomenal. We checked out some beers, went to Eagle Park, went to eighteen forty. Carl, any comments on Milwaukee beers? Well, took my breath away, literally. He, Joel's drank especially eighteen forty, Joel's drank knees on the show. Uh, a few weeks on the on the bench, you know, and like surprise, surprise, I'm drinking 1840, and you know, you think ah, I can't be that good, but yeah, super, super beers. They really were great. I've been checking a ton of these things into Untapped as I've kind of got as I've gone along, and I think I left England on 650, and as we sit here now today, I think I'm at 680. So I've checked in some quite a few, you know, in, in the course of a week. Uh, that sounds really bad. But uh, yeah, those 1840s, they were yeah, super, super tasty. And I have a favourite beer, which we'll talk about a little bit later on when uh, when we're all having a little sip. But yeah, 1840, incredible. And then the Eagle Park, uh, they had really, really good ones as well. They had a, a really good, which Joel brought back from the bar as a bit of a, a bit of a surprise, which is a milkshake IPA. And, and not normally a fan of those. You know, they can sometimes be a bit overly sweet and a bit sickly, but it, it was... It had the, that balance perfectly, perfectly great. And yeah, some really, really good, good, strong beers, which set me up nicely for coming to Vancouver. Yeah, we've had some really good beers here in Vancouver. Holy smokes. Let's talk a little bit about Vancouver while we're on it. Shane, you've been an awesome, hospitable host. So thank you. Ah, oh, shucks, for guys. For everything you've done. <laughs> it's been a wonderful week. The man set us up just perfectly with a oh, yeah. fridge full of beer, right? All oh, really, yeah. really good beer. Went to the Whitecaps game last night. Oh, that was an absolute blast, man! And uh, and the Whitecaps uh, got a victory, the first uh, victory of the year. So really, we might have to bring you guys back a little more often. Oh yeah, yeah, they've been struggling to to. You know, I think they picked up one point at home out of three games. So with last night being a win, yeah, four out of four now for them, and they were playing the top of the league as well. So really surprising. Went up to Whistler, had that beautiful drive up. What's that about ninety minutes, sixty minutes? I'm not sure. We had good company in the car. I don't time went by real quick, but it, it was a drive, right? Yeah, it's it's usually about an hour and a half, maybe to two hours if you follow, you know, the speed limit or whatnot. But which of course you did, yeah. yeah which yes, yeah. yes, we did. Um, but the views are, are absolutely spectacular. One of one of the one of the best drives I think in uh, in North America. They say 
Uh, so it goes, it goes by quick. There's so much to look at. So many, you know, mountaintops and, you know, the peaks and, uh, great views of the, the water as well. So it's, it's fantastic. And, uh, you know, glad we all got a chance to go up there and, uh, show off a bit of this jewel to you guys. Yeah. The mountains up there in Whistler. Beautiful. Yep. Stunning. We went to an Irish pub. That was good. Yeah. Gotta, gotta get your Irish pubs. They're, they're always great. Always comfy, cozy. Not great atmosphere. Everybody's just so friendly. Great to be there, you know, chatting up the bartender and whatnot. Just, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just an all around great time. There. <laughs> Proper pint of Guinness, Carl. Yes or no? Yep. Fantastic pint. Yeah. Really good pint of Guinness. Can't complain. We had a couple of picture opportunities. That's one thing we forgot for like the first two, two days or something. And then. Yeah, I think we got hung up. Like we're so caught up in just hanging out with each other and just having a good time and chatting and stuff. And it was like, oh, we really should. Um, you know, take a couple of pictures, otherwise, you know, it didn't happen. So, yeah, we've, we've took a few, we've shared a few on social media and stuff, and, you know, we've we just had a blast with each other. It's been great. I hope it becomes an annual, or just a tradition. Again, we started off by saying, or Carl said, it's the first time mm-hmm. that we've gotten together. I like that. Here, here. I hope it happens again. This has been an absolute blast. There's been a lot of video game news that's dropped while we've been here, and we've kind of been keeping an eye on it a little bit. So let's let's try and make do our best here without having spent tons of time like we normally do reading up on all this stuff. But first up, Sony's next gen console, Sony's lead console architect Mark Cerny, who was there for PlayStation Four, apparently going to be there here for the next one, revealed some basic info to Wired. Well, number one, it won't be out this year. I guess that's not a surprise. He didn't say when it's coming, but it's not this year. The CPU is based on the third generation of AMD's Ryzen line. Contains eight cores. Uh, the company's new 7NM Zen 2. Why am I reading this? I, I don't know anything about this. It's going to be a beefy console. Yeah. Do you have any insight, Carl? <laughs> yeah. I don't usually read the specs. No, there's not much that jumped out to me, really. I mean, the, the, he went on about the solid state driving it a few times. And, it, you know, obviously, if you're, you're booting games up and if you're the transition between loading screens and things, it does make a difference. Uh, it, we've already got one in the One X. Uh, it works really well. And obviously, most gamers you know, game, who own a gaming PC have got an SSD anyway. So there wasn't too much to, uh, that, that took my eye with what he was saying, apart from the GPU when he's saying that it's capable of ray tracing, which is a high-end, well, very high-end um, kind of graphic, which they use mainly in movies and stuff, which is in, in, isn't really, was just starting to come into the real high-end gaming machines. And if it can pull off stuff like that, then it's, it's going to be damn impressive. But, you know, it, it, again, it's not out this year. It could well be end of 2020 i guess you know it doesn't sound like it's a million miles away if they've got a dev kit but uh, again you know it's like how much is it going to be you know by the time it comes out where a pc is going to be so it, it's we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see what, what the crack is those new chips and stuff doesn't that seem like it's going to be a pricey console potentially yeah, absolutely absolutely but then the one x has got some power to it uh, and it's liquid cooled and it, it really does outperform a lot of gaming pcs that would be significantly more expensive than a one x you know it, it does put out some serious performance so it's not beyond the realms of possibility that the, the ps5 if it came out and it was around about that on a 450 pound mark you know it, it it would be expensive but compared to a gaming pc you, you, you'd be saving a lot so they talked a lot about the ssd drive being not only faster load times from the hard drive to load your games but also he, he said it's a true game changer i think was his quote because he talked a lot about the gaming aspects, about how, like he talked about Spider-Man and the city loading and how it's currently limited with the Spider-Man's movement as far as what yeah. you're seeing, but having the SSD will allow you to load parts of the game much quicker. He, he didn't really go in a, didn't say how exactly they're going to do that, but said it's up to developers. So I think half that article was just about that SSD drive mm-hmm. and its additional capabilities compared to where they are now. Not a lot of new information, really. Oh, uh, PlayStation 4 games, backwards compatible on this mm-hmm. new console. So that's that was news, although expected, right? Everybody, I think so. Everybody was planning on that. What do you think about that, Shane? You're a big backwards compatibility guy. <laughs> I certainly am. Into it. Yeah, no, you you knew it was going it was gonna happen. I mean, that's that's a big deal for for a lot of gamers, wh- whether or not they use it or just having that option there. I think people started spreading. You know, a bit of rumors that it was going to be backwards compatibility across all PlayStation platforms, going back to one, two, three, and four. I'm sure, I'm sure they'd love that. It'd be fantastic. But you know, as long as you're playing your PS5 games and they're you know second to none, I, I think that's where uh, 
that's where the importance and where it, where it should be should be laid at. Would never expect it, but that would be like my dream feature is if it was compatible with every single prior PlayStation. I do not expect that to happen. Seems like an impossibility, but wouldn't that be fantastic? I could I could see them doing that a couple of years into the PS5. You know, I think it's something that they could they could work on and and, and uh, kind of launch with some sort of software firmware update. I, I could see them doing that, pulling it out of their hat at some point, and you know, blowing everybody away with it. It's Sony. Who knows what they're going to do? Yeah, it's just the architectures for these systems are so different. They went really weird with that cell chip for a while, and yeah, it's was... hard with the PCR architecture to be able to go backwards compatible. Totally. I was just about to say that exact same thing. I mean, literally, the PS4 for people to develop on is so much easier. It's just like a PC. And all they're doing is using that same kind of infrastructure to to go on to the next level of performance PC. So it's, it's only when you go back to look at that, the PS3 was notoriously hard to program on and, and for game developers. So I, I guess other than a streaming solution, I, I don't know if they could do it without significant work. And, and it, it, could, it, it might well be that they can't be I don't want to know what the financial benefit for them is really of doing that, especially when they've got the streaming stuff. Yeah, not much to. I don't know what what the news is from this or what we can really gather about what the next gen PlayStation is going to be. But it does seem like they're going to continue to just be their their own power force. They don't seem to be competing with Microsoft and Xbox like mm-hmm. prior generations, right? They had their presentation at E3, which seemed like a reaction to what Xbox had just embarrassed themselves on stage with all of their plans. And then Sony (laughs) came out later and they didn't change anything, but they definitely changed the marketing of that console to really go after Xbox and say everything. They just all this, the foot in mouth crap you just heard from Xbox. We're not doing any of that Mm -hmm. was pretty much their approach. And now here it's it's almost like they're in their own silo. And they're, they're not looking at the other consoles. For example, the, the Game Pass equivalent, we've heard nothing of that. Xbox has got Game Pass. They didn't mention that at all here, although he's just talking about the hardware, so maybe that's not the right time. Nothing about streaming content to multiple devices, like the Google Stadia is about to do, Xbox probably doing here as well. No handheld gaming, no, no Switch style. So just a powerful machine and their continued first-party development teams anything else you guys want to say about sony staying in their lane or any any discussion points thoughts the only thing i would say is that they are at the moment streaming is still very new and you know sony are doing really really well with the strategy that they've got uh you know people obviously want the first party you know adventure story driven games that that's what sony are, are doing so well with at the moment and for them, it's a sensible thing to do. You can always add streaming. You know, you can always add that function functionality later when people have got the box anyway. So by sticking to their lane and just being like, right, we've made a ton of money on the PS4 with all these first party games, and and showing that that's that's the direction we're going in, then it makes sense to stick to the same thing with the PS5. And it it's not a bad idea if everyone goes down the streaming route. For me, then it doesn't give. People haven't got the choice, so really, so it's only just doing the sensible thing. And like you know, if people want the games, brilliant. Then we've got the console ready, and we're in a pole position because no one else is really focusing on it. And which we'll come across in the next piece of news with with Xbox. You know, by by you know wanting people to go to the store and buy the physical discs as well as the downloads. You know, it keeps them in keeps in the best of both worlds. I think they sold a lot of PlayStation fours this generation, a lot, and the fact that they're backwards compatible. With the PlayStation 4, I think is a very smart business move because they're going to keep a lot of people in that ecosystem. So they'll put out a new console and all of their current fans, which they've got plenty because of how many PS4s they've sold, mm-hmm. will look at it and say, well, maybe I will get that. I can take my PS4 trade up and get the PS5. I think it's smart to kind of stay in that same wheelhouse where they are, where they are currently. As far as competition goes, do you guys predict they're going to do anything like a Game Pass? Or a streaming on multiple devices? Do you do you think that they're going to try and keep up with the others at all in that regard, or are they just going to not do any of that and completely stay in their lane? I think the the, the I definitely add some depth to their PlayStation now. I, I think we'll see we'll see that get a, get some more depth to it. But I, you know, I don't know. They they seem to you know do do their own thing, 
and they seem to do it well. I think if every console does the same thing, uh, it makes it boring. And I, I don't like that. I think we, we spoke a number of episodes back about it and said I wish that, uh, you know, each console kind of, you know, stayed in their lane, did did their thing, and just, just put out great games, you know. Those, those great first-party titles, that's what... That's what brings, uh, you know, uh, you know, our memories back of, uh, you know, Sega Genesis, the Mega Drive, and uh, Super Nintendo was a lot of those first-party games that you know you couldn't get on system, and you you know you're trading systems with your friends to you know play, you know, Streets of Rage or whatnot uh, for the weekend, and uh, you know, and and that, and that was a lot of fun, and I like to see you know maybe a bit more of that. I think there's a lot of, I don't want to say too much third-party stuff, but. There, there's a, there's a lot there for whatever box you get, but I think we're we, we need some you know solid first party titles to to really show off these boxes. The, the the thing for me, I think, is PlayStation now. The perception is that it's not doing very well when you compare it to Game Pass because everyone Microsoft did a really good job in pushing Game Pass and promoting it, and a lot of people enjoy it. It's a great service. PlayStation now is also doing really really well for Sony. They make a ton of money out of it. It's the most uh, remunerative service of its kind uh, across the consoles. So it would make sense for Sony to bundle that with PlayStation Plus, you know, with the, the same way that Microsoft are looking with Gold and with Game Pass, which we'll come on to in a minute. And if they do that, and if they can draw a line perhaps with the backwards, so you've got PlayStation 5 compatible with 4, and then they can say, right, okay, well, the Game Pass will cover... You know, maybe some new games, but predominantly we'll cover a back catalogue. Maybe you put some of the older stuff on there that that's a way of giving them the backwards compatibility while also tying it in with PlayStation Plus, maybe drop the price a bit. Because they have dropped the amount of games now, which we just have two PS4 games rather than the PS Vita and PS3. So it's it's one of those where they need to do something, but they're making enough money out of it. It's a successful service for them that they probably don't need to try too hard. So I think it wouldn't surprise me if they've got the idea and they're just keeping it on the back burner until... They start to see the, the impact in numbers. Yeah, definitely, definitely. They seem to, they seem to do that a lot. I think have, have something and just kind of keep it in their back pocket, and when the time is right, just just hit it down. And then t- I, I I think that's something we could see with more backwards compatibility down the road. That would be a good way to entice people too. If, if you've got a PS4 and you're not one of these people that buy a new console right when it comes out, to that might be a good carrot to get people to to jump on all these PlayStation Four owners to jump onto the five. If they offer something like, hey, we've got a new service and you'll get a couple PlayStation 5 games out of it. And hey, all your PS4 games will still work on there. That might be a good way. Otherwise, people may sit pat for a while. And I think yeah. eventually they're going to buy that PS5 because all those games are compatible. I, I, like, I think it's a good strategy for keeping people in their ecosystem. And there's a lot of people in there right now. They're doing really well. Yeah. It's not like the new Xbox is going to come out and all those people are going to jump. They're not jumping ship. Yeah. They're staying with PlayStation. And the fact that this new console allows them to do that, I think it's really, really smart. If they didn't make it backwards compatible, they, they, people buying a new console might have to look at it like, which one do I want? Do I want a Switch? Do I want a 5? Do I want an Xbox? Xbox One S All Digital Edition. We've got some more information about that. We had a hell of a chat back in the car ride from Whistler. So hopefully, yeah. we, can, hopefully was... we can kind of recapture some of that here. Definitely. That was a lot of, lot of fun. So they announced it being $249. It's out May 7th. Includes three games, Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, and Forza Horizon 3, which is one Forza Horizon ago. Yeah. It's not four. That would seem kind of odd. Game Pass is currently available. They did not put Game Pass in the box. But coincidentally, you can get three months of Game Pass for a dollar if you buy it right away. I think that offer expires a few weeks after this thing launches. So if you're an early adopter of the 1S All Digital Edition and you don't have Game Pass, you could get it for a buck. Um, maybe they'll, they'll extend that offer out. News coming out at the same time they're bundling Xbox Live with Xbox Game Pass. And in the U.S., it's fourteen ninety nine a month. You did the math. That is, I think, the exact same price Yeah. that you would normally pay for it. $60 a year being $5 a month and then Game Pass being nine ninety nine. It's the exact same price as the current Game Pass and Xbox Live, except it's on a monthly level. Yep. So not not exciting news. No. They're not even discounting it at all by bundling them together. It appeals to me. 
I think, per- personally, because at the moment I've got an Xbox Live account expiring at a certain date, and I've got Game Pass expiring at a certain date. And the only reason I really have it is so that the boy can play when we've got connected Xboxes. So if I could just pay 15 quid a month and then just can it when I want to and leave it for a couple of months and then jump back in and I've got Gold and Game Pass ready to go together for the new games that have dropped, it would suit me because I think that I would I would end up saving money over the course of the year rather than just paying 12 months for both services and only actually play them probably six months out of 12. So it, there might be a benefit there. The 249 price, I think, was our biggest point of conversation yeah. in the car. I expected it to be 199 249 to me seems kind of high because you can get a disc version with a disc drive for 299 and also it comes with a game. So you, you save $50 and you ditch the disc drive? That doesn't seem like a doesn't seem like a value. No. Why well, I'd pay 50 more for the disc. And it's not and they're not providing you with the bigger hard drive. It's still a 1 terabyte hard drive yet the, it's it's an all digital machine. So uh, no brainer. You'd think you'd put jam pack, you know, a ton more space into it. Like at least, at least bare minimum two terabyte, bare minimum. As you, you, there's no need for a disk drive, so just pump it all in there. But kind of weird. It's that's really that's a really steep price for something that's doing that. I th- I think I think you know, I think yeah. even one ninety nine might be a bit much. Or, or if they, you know, staggered it with, you know, like a bigger hard drive in it and then just do like a, a, a you know, a budget model, you know, 149, one terabyte, here you go, you know, just a real get off the ground, easy peasy, hook it into your Wi-Fi, start, you know, throw in six months of, of Game Pass, not, not, a, not a one month or 14 day trial, because honestly, 14 days, you know, who... You bring it home, you can be playing it all weekend and whatnot. It's great. Then, you know, you're back to work or whatever for, you know, a lot of people. Keep in mind the people are buying it, you know, working folks and whatnot. But yeah, it's uh, throw in, give a, give, them, give somebody a good taste, get them, get them really into Game Pass. You know, in six months, definitely does it. They say 21 days, you know, creates a habit. So let, let the person get in there, get comfortable with it, get used to it. So that way after that six months, then, then it, it, it's gone. It's like, oh, crap! I, you know, I need to get that. I really enjoyed that. You know, you become a, become accustomed to things like that, and I think that would be, uh, you know, a better thing. I mean, who knows? I mean, they might bundle something in there with it or whatnot. But yeah, I think I think they kind of missed the mark on this a little bit. It it, it feels way. If I, if I can be completely honest, it it feels like they 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 just missed it a little bit on this. Yeah, it it feels strange. The price point feels strange. The when I think about this, I think it's a good idea. Because to my mind, you've got a generation of, of, of kids in particular, like my son is, is 12 next week, but it's on the shows that probably. And he plays Apex, he plays Fortnite, he, he, he's he got all, all the systems, you know, he's got PS4, Switch, Xbox One, gaming PC, but he goes back to the games which are popular with with his mates. So he, he plays Fortnite and Apex and a couple of other games. And these these kids don't tend to... They're a market that, that you want to try and attract, especially in a discless console, because they're used to downloading, they're used to doing all that stuff digitally. But they, but at the same time, they're not like looking at YouTube and they're not hooked on like, this game's coming out in six months' time and I want that game. It's more like they, they watch an influencer or a content creator and then they're like, I, I want to download this game, I want to you know go on and spend 20 bucks and, do, and done it. Now, they, this machine would be an ideal thing for parents with kids like that because... You know, Microsoft don't need to worry about them not having the uptake and picking up physical games because the, 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 there's a market that does, just aren't interested. But the price point is 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 at a point where if you, if the parents going into the store and it's like a fifty dollar price difference between getting well actually you can play Blu-rays in that one uh, or physical games and you, then you, you're probably going to go for it. But if it's one ninety nine and and it had you know. It wouldn't kill Microsoft to chuck six months of gold in six months. You know, you just sell it as a, like you know. The, once you once you got this, you were online, and then like Shane says, you're in the infrastructure. You, you're hooked in, and you know you you you're there for the foreseeable future, really. So that's kind of a market that I think that I don't know whether they were looking at that or, and and they've missed that, or you know, it, it's it's too expensive for someone who's got like a one X original Xbox One to then upgrade. Like they, maybe they don't want to upgrade to the one S and. Maybe they would have been tempted with a slightly cheaper machine to move from the Xbox One 
to that and I think again it's too expensive for that they're probably going to either sit on what they've got or get the one with the disk drive and it, for me it's, it's, it's finding out what it's aimed at I, th- I think when you when you uh, uh, look at the $50 difference between between a, a disk disk and a, and a disk based console I mean it's it's an easy once you're spending you know what 280 compared to 330 dollars you know, it's it's in, what's another fifty dollars to have uh, a bunch more options, like say you know you know for your for your child or whatnot. Now, how are you going to wrap up a digital game from for Christmas morning? You know what I mean, or or there are these free to play games that they always do. You know, you spend the extra fifty dollars and you get the console, and they you know get them a game or whatnot for birthday or whatnot, something done wrap or something. I don't know. I think it's weird, but. But I, th- I think the price point and, and throwing in throwing in those games. I mean, Minecraft's not really what it used to be. Like the hype's really uh, kind of kind of faded quite a bit in that game. So that's that's kind of odd to put in there. And I mean, Sea of Thieves is a, definitely a current game that's probably probably not even a year old. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, no. So interesting. Yeah, and Sea of Thieves you can get on Game Pass. Forza Horizon Four. One better than three is available on Game Pass. I don't know why they tossed in three here. I don't know how much it costs to make these machines. I don't know if two forty nine is. It, maybe that is the sweet spot based on the expense it costs to make the machines. I have no mm-hmm. idea. But if you're going to put out a diskless console, so putting it differently, I went to Best Buy's website and I looked at the pricing of the current disk drive one, Xbox One S's. They're all on sale for two forty nine right now. The same exact price. <laughs> wow. You know, maybe that's a, a just this week or something, but I don't I don't see the incentive to to get a discless Xbox unless you're going to do something more. The price needs to be different, lower. I think one ninety nine would have been the sweet spot. Maybe they lose money there. Maybe that doesn't make sense. I don't know. But then toss in Game Pass or something. Give some other kind of value for yeah. that two forty nine. I think if it if it came with a year of Game Pass, and I know that's a lot. That's that costs them money. But if it did that, I, I mean that two forty nine all of a sudden seems reasonable. It's it starts to, but I don't know. It's still, still for a machine that's only fifty dollars more for what what appears to consumers as being so much more, right? I mean, it, majority of games you can buy digitally as it is, right? From you know the Xbox Live Store or whatnot, right? So most of them are there, but seeing them side by side. You know, that's 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 not a lot. I think the one I think Joel said the one ninety nine is the you know sweet spot, and just toss in you know a year of Game Pass or however long, but a significant amount of time, I think uh, would be spot on. Yeah, and let's not forget that it being all digital isn't always a benefit to people, so that can put people off as much as go for them. You know, so they need. Almost more than in any other case when someone releases a console, they need an excuse for people to be like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll make the plunge toward digital." We've talked before about the you know the pros and cons of physical versus digital media, and you know it, it takes some people a bit of time or a, or a bit of incentive to, to to make that jump. And I don't think they've got any of that with this. It's it's a very strange choice for them. Definitely, I I know a guy who he only buys physical and waits until it's like the game of year so there's no digital codes or downloads or anything everything is absolutely on the disc put it in works yeah. yep exactly and that's that. the only and that's the only way you'll play games so yeah and isn't that isn't that who they're targeting with this the more casual casual and maybe children or people who want another xbox under the other tv or something i don't know i yeah. put putting it differently and i guess this it, maybe this gives them a little looks a little bit better for them but if you go to the store right now and you're looking at all the consoles on the shelf, this is the cheapest one. The Switch is two ninety nine. Yeah. The PS4 is what? Two ninety nine? About two ninety nine, about the same, yeah. Probably yeah. The yeah. Pro and the X are three ninety nine. So if you've you've got a money conscious I don't know, I know there are people out there that would then that when they go shopping, something that's like ten cents cheaper, they buy. Yep, totally. Just because oh, yeah. it's cheaper. So this is this is the best priced console right now. Two forty nine. So if you're looking across the shelf and you're just being a a cheap cheapo, or you're just worried about the price of the thing, and you don't want a disc drive, or maybe you don't have the knowledge that that we do as gamers, 
Like, oh, well, this one's two forty nine. That's a whole fifty dollars less. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah, just by based on price. Yeah, it happens. A lot of people. A lot of people. That's just don't care. Well, that's cheaper, but I'll buy them now. Whatever. I don't care. Who knows? Maybe we'll see. Yeah. Maybe we'll see them play on that a little bit. You know, maybe with different models. You know, aesthetics can count for a lot as well. People say so they made it look a little bit, a little bit sexier, perhaps, and. It's not that much smaller than the regular 1S, I don't think, anyway, because, you know, a disk drive doesn't take up that much room. So I'm not quite sure how, how much smaller it is than the 1S. It's it looks not... almost exactly the same. Yeah. It just doesn't have that disk drive, which I think it is... It does, yeah. It look, it's just really weird that like, they're they're doing this. Like, you could easily redesigned it in there with, you know, a bigger hard drive and just have it kind of like a, like a little, you know, box to sit in there. Mm. I mean, it does... It, there's not going to be a whole lot of components in it. Sleeker or something, you know, just to give half size, you know, maybe yeah. you know, or something in there, just to uh, identify itself as as different on the wall next to the One S and the One X. Because it goes through your mind, doesn't it? Like when I, when I had that, I had the original Xbox One, which was a, a beast, like so. Oh, big. The, the VCR, yeah, the Betamax. And when <laughs> when when I saw when I did the announcement for the Xbox One X and the S, I thought, wow, that S looks so. You know, that made me, just looking at the thing, made me want to change the model of console that I had. Really? Yeah, for sure. Because, it, you know, at, at that point, you, you, your launch model is a couple of years old. You know, you're like, well, actually, I can trade it in, maybe, and, and, and get the, the newer shiny one for only, like, a, a hundred quid or whatever. So when I saw the One S and, uh, and obviously the One X, which I've got, I mean, that thing is beautiful. It's like a tiny little box, so inconspicuous under the, you know, under the telly. It's heavy as all hell, but... There's a trick there with it. Like, look at the PS3 when the original fat PS3 was oh. trimmed down into that sleeker one, you know, and the PS2 when they they minimised that down and they put in an array of colours, um, when and it changed the design round. I think that's what maybe they want to be aiming for. But it, it just seems that they've literally just took, took the disc drive out. And it, it, I don't know. I, I still think of I think of all those things. And be like, you know, who are you going to target it at, and for what's going to go through someone's mind when they go in the store? John makes a good point. It's the cheapest one on the shelf, and that may well be what 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 they pick up. But you never in, quite... until they go buy a couple games oh, yeah. and then try to put them. <laughs> and, and the clerk at Best Buy is there going, "Yeah, that's fine." <laughs> oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, they they ain't going to uh, correct you with a, with a little spiff on uh, Xbox games this month. So I tweeted it out the other day, and I asked people's opinion on this, and Zach, Zach Shipley, replied and said, I think 250 is a little insane right now, but if they drop it to 199 for holidays and 150 for Black Friday, it's amazing. So maybe that would happen. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with him. Thomas Martinson, at Darth Apathetic. <laughs> I love that Twitter <laughs> handle. Name. See, it, he says, it seems like a base price that gives them room to run discounts and still at least break even on the unit. Yeah, I think they're right. It does give them some space for for Black Friday, but I don't. I don't know if you release a console and, and think of that like, yeah, now we have space for Black Friday. You know, that's that's you're just trying to have a sale at that point. That's not your strategy. You're going to shoot yourself in the foot doing that if you're uh, as a shop owner or you know selling selling product. That's yeah, yeah. You ain't going to be around too long, son. I think that's it for news. Besides some uh, Persona Five characters showing up in Smash. Yeah, Joker's in Smash. Yeah, that, that, uh, you get a nice little trailer on YouTube and talking about how he's he's going to be in there he, with um, his uh, his main kind of persona, and and also you know you've you've got the guys in there, you know Mona, and and it it just looks ace. You know, I, I saw that this morning. I got quite excited, and and I don't play Smash, <laughs> <laughs> but it's clued in the past, isn't it? You know, and it, yeah, it, it does look pretty cool. Yeah, it's in the fighter fighter pass or yeah. something. You have to have a pass. Some DLC, bought DLC to get that fighter. We've been playing a lot of games together. Should we talk about what we've been playing? Yeah, yeah. We've yeah, we've had some great games. Yeah, let's let the people know. So I've been playing, and, and these guys have been sitting here kind of watching me play through this one. A game called Grease. I think it's called Grease. I think that's how it's pronounced. Grease. It sounds funny. It's G-R-I-S. Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt that one. <laughs> Gree? Gree? Ooh, Grease? Gree. Could be Gree. Gree, give it the foreign flavor. So it's a game by the studio called Nomada, I believe, or Nomada. They're out of Barcelona. Yes. And it was published by Devolver, available on the Switch and on Microsoft Windows and Mac OS. So it's only on the consoles. It's only on the Switch. It's a side-scrolling platformer. 
game with watercolor effects. And you kind of start off with your character losing the color in her world. And slowly as you progress through the game, you gain color back. So green is added and red is added and blue is added. But it's a very beautiful aesthetic or world that this game pl takes place in and definitely has a watercolor theme to it. Quite stunning, I think, to look at. It's also one of these games that Shane compared it to Journey, or I think he said that Journey has kind of opened up the doors for a lot of games like this. Yeah, definitely. You can you can see the the success and the the influence uh, a game like Journey that just w was extremely successful on the on you know, the PlayStation Three last generation. This uh, one kind of tugs at your heart the same way. Yeah, yeah, and you and you're seeing a lot more of these games like that. It's just it's they're becoming a lot more acceptable to you know the mainstream and and this one Greece we'll, we'll say uh, it is phenomenal. It's been it's been a joy waking up in the morning and then and, and coming out and seeing joel already at it he's got the coffee going it's great you, you come in you smell all that nice coffee and there he is playing and he's just like you know rubbing the the sleep out of your eyes and it's like what is this and just hooked watching him for you know a good couple hours first thing in the morning you start off the game your your main character is a female and she loses like she's a singer or she likes to sing must be something she enjoys but she immediately loses her voice and every time she tries to do it, she's like gasping a little bit. It seems like the theme is you're kind of dealing with fear and getting dealing through like dark times and having her sort of piece back her life, I think. is kind of the feel I got for the game. And it's even represented at times by uh, like a female statue that just keeps cracking and breaking apart. And well, I can't spoil the end of the game, but you start, you kind of work your way through that as, as you go. Another thing with the side scro scrolling platformer here, it does a little bit have a little bit of a Metroid feel to it because you're as you're going along, you're, you're gaining abilities that you can immediately use. You don't have any backtracking necessarily, but the different abilities allow you to the colors, for example, you see different shapes that all of a sudden you can now jump on. So see, um, immediately by adding a color, you've got additional capabilities, but also the the moves. You gain moves as you progress through the game, and those moves become important to, to progress. So it kind of reminded me of Metroid a little bit. It's almost like you you start off singing and then you lose your, your voice. You can't sing and you have no ability other than to sort of jump. And But then as you go, out, go through the game, you, you gain abilities like you can turn into a block and smash things, break through surfaces. You get your voice back at some point. You can use that to your advantage. Wonderful game. Came out December of 2018 and I think I'm going to include it potentially in my favorites of the year for 2019 because that's when i played it i'm quite impressed with this game yeah it, it looks really beautiful really really nice looking game you definitely get that journey vibe uh the, the colors to me also give me not different kind of game but sound shapes those kind of like you know the, the deliberate but very bright and definite colors and the water coloring is beautiful and i've had yeah like shane said i've had a lot of fun just getting up and watching you play it and you know the, the 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 animation as well is you know when when you've been when there are things going on let's say without spoiling anything it flows so well it's beautiful to watch yeah I'm looking forward to playing it myself hand drawn just a beautiful looking game that's kind of the, all I've been playing I started that on the plane on the way up here to Vancouver and finished it this morning finished it off before we went to breakfast but I, I also because I had the switch up here and Carl's got his switch as well and he brought his dock. I plugged in the other night, Tetris 99. Oh, man. And we did like a, a pass the controller around the room. So I don't know if you guys want to share your impressions. It's your first time playing that as well, right, right, Carl? Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd heard about it. I uh, hadn't downloaded it yet. I downloaded it when I was here, so I've, I've got that ready now. Yeah, a lot of fun, like Battle Royale for Tetris. It, it's it's fab. It, it struck me like how quickly you can just jump straight into an online game. You know, you get in there, you don't have to wait more than like, 10, 15 seconds, and it's boom, match made, and, and there you go. And you, you can kind of just hunker down and play your own game of Tetris, but you, you have to be conscious that there's all there's all these other people playing, and they can target you, attack you, uh, and you kind of you can defend yourself, attack them back, and or, or just you know let the computer decide who to attack. But it, it, it's crazy, you know. I, I, it really made me understand just how much my Tetris skills have deteriorated over the years. Like, first time playing this, it's like anything now, as we pass the controller around, 
we got better, you know, and we, we, we started to get in that groove a little bit, you know, realised you could press a button to drop the shape all the way down to the floor really quickly. Uh, and little things like that, you know, it it, it's, it looks great, it, it, it's Tetris, man, it plays well. But I think this adds a little dynamic to it, that that, that, that sense of urgency, like on top of the, the sense of urgency you already had when you played Tetris, you know, the fact that other people are, are targeting you. And yeah, it gets super, super crazy. But you know, I managed to squeeze in a ninth place finish, and I was that I was chuffed, man. I can retire. That was a pretty good finish. I know Shane finished pretty high there too. Yeah, I think I got nineteenth was was my highest. But man, fun game. Who doesn't love Tetris? And this is a great, you know, different kind of take on on Tetris, but still keeping the you know the core gameplay there. And when you're playing it with friends in the same room, I mean you. You got your mates yelling out, you know, what the next piece is and whatnot. And, man, we just had so much fun playing it that first night. It's a super great idea to kind of, from Nintendo really, you know, getting people on their online service and things like that. They need these kind of games. You know, thinking, actually, everyone's talking about it. I really do want to play, you know. It's only 20 quid a year for Nintendo's online. Do it and I can play. I know it's free to play, but it, they need those kind of games, just little 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 bits like that just to give them a helping hand because otherwise you're just logging on to play like you know you smash or mario kart or whatever so yeah great idea great fun good game to pass the controller around Uh, i was telling the guys that for me to play this by myself it's very intense i I don't think i can play more than three four matches before i sort of want to break the television and my controllers because it can be infuriating when you oh yeah you get a little bit of uh, bad luck in there or people attacking you or even good luck, yeah. Yeah, or good luck. <laughs> it could be on a great streak, and then all of a sudden, you know, everyone's everyone's aiming at you, and you just you, this concrete wall, keep, you know, underneath you pushes to the top, and that's super, super frustrating. And then this morning, Shane, you made some comments about you're kind of looking at the switch, right? Do you want to share? Is that are you legit thinking about it or what? Yeah, man. Like getting hands on playing Tetris. Uh, we played a bit of the uh, the SNK anniversary collection did a little two-player with carl this morning as well uh the the grease game as well it's it's got me in there i i hope this year you know maybe you know black friday around christmas time boxing day um we see a bit of a bit of a break on the console because currently they're they're about 379 up here which is and that's without a game so so that's a little bit steep to just go out and and drop onto a, a console you know, without a, you know, a decent, decent library just yet. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a great piece of hardware blown away by it. Feels great. Looks better. looks better than I imagined. So yeah, so, as soon as I can get it a little bit cheaper, I, I think I'll be in on it. Yeah. I'm hoping that when obviously they've announced two new versions of the switch as well. So fingers crossed that the, the existing one probably will go on sale, you know, just to prepare shops and stuff ready for get rid of that stock and prepare for the, uh, the 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 cheaper version and then the more expensive version i would imagine is that that hasn't been announced yet has it it's kind of just rumored right um have they th- announced anything i think yeah what well, i haven't officially announced and said here's the models but i think we're all yeah we, we know that there's two new ones coming well it's usually nintendo right they always get a, have a light or a, a different mm. version right around the corner yeah so i think it seems logical that that's happening but yeah, that switch has sold brilliantly well, and you know it, the, the price has just stayed solid. So yeah, fingers crossed, mate. It comes down to it because it's a great piece of hardware. Yeah, and Joel played was playing a little bit of uh, put on Mario Brothers uh, for me to check out as well. Man, that game looks that's gorgeous, man. That's a gorgeous game in Mario, and that what they always do do great about the Mario games is they, in, in my opinion, they they keep a lot of those those old uh, enemies. You know that you grew up with in like Mario One, Two, Three. You know Super Mario World. All those enemies, they 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 keep them there. So even somebody that you know, like myself, that hasn't played you know GameCube or uh, N sixty four or whatnot. But now you see it now, and it's like, yeah, I know, I know that guy. oh, that guy's a pain in the butt. You know, he's like, yeah, I mean the controller, <laughs> give me, give yeah. me a go. And and there's going to be a lot of other people, you know, our, our age that you know would see that as well. And it gets you right into it. Everything's so familiar. You know, and, and Nintendo's always really great with that. Not only with uh, you know the enemies, you know the visuals and whatnot, but also the audio. I mean, they the, all those old sounds. I mean, obviously they're you know updated and whatnot, and they sound great. But it's just like those same chimes. You know, like uh, you know when Mario dies or whatnot, or he gets a power up. You you always get that, and it just 
you know, it, it really, it really strikes that, that nostalgia for, for anyone really that has played a Mario game at least. Yeah. You had a stack of SNES games on the table. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I mean, if you, and I even said this to you, Shane, if you like Nintendo, yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't like some of this stuff. And you haven't, you didn't, I didn't realize you didn't have a GameCube or an N64. No. As far as I can tell, you're a Nintendo, you're a Nintendo guy. I mean, you that SNES Whoa. collection. You got Super Mario, you got all Mario All Stars in there. Yeah, you had the the RPG Mario RPGs in that pile. It wasn't Zelda in that pile too. No, actually, I don't own a copy of uh, Zelda. All right, I'm out. <laughs> it's always people want so much for that that game, especially out here in these parts and whatnot. Uh, if I can find like a nice clean copy, you know, around forty bucks, I'll, I'll definitely do it. But guys want you know closer to sixty, seventy for clean ones so even like the player's choice version which is you know basically the greatest hits you know that came out later i still want a fortune for those so Mm. so yeah it's just it's just picking picking my spots and being trying to be smart with uh you know building a a snes collection and not jumping on it you know just because it's great i can always find i know i'll find stuff cheaper especially games like that like you know zelda mario and you know f-zero and whatnot because there's millions of copies that were made right and it's just a matter of time and just being at the right place at the right time, and I'll, I'll get some deals. I've already gotten some great deals and whatnot that has, has definitely helped boot my boost my collection. Uh, so yeah, you just got to be patient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, just yeah. like sit on it, chill, and they will turn up. Yep. And then when I see a game that is hard to find, and I do see it at a decent price, I can't walk away again. I need to just buck up. And pay the money and get it because yeah. I've missed out on a couple of titles that I, I should have nabbed. And I know they were well priced as it is. So we got a chance to play your your analog NT. Yeah, and get get to hands on with that thing. Literally, we picked it up and held it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is a, it's, a it's yeah beefy console. It's got some weight to it. It, it feels it feels like a sturdy machine, at least in touching it, handling it. It's not a cheap punk of plastic. No, no, it's quality. It, it it is quality and it runs the game superbly. You know, we 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 went through a few last night, played a few different ones. A couple I did completely forgotten were were around, and yeah, it works really well. A couple of those eight bit dough controllers in there, and it it works like a charm. Played some NBA Jam last night. Oh, that was good times. Carl's the current uh, leader champion. of uh, ABOG NBA <laughs> Jam. Then you guys played. What you play after that? International soccer. We played. I'd go with. I'd. Final fight, yeah. Final fight, Ooh. Which, which, yeah, great. What, what a great game that is. And then, what was the wrestling one that was uh, Saturday Night Slam Masters, yeah, which is great, yeah. One of those ones that you know, it's a solid game. It was a uh, uh, Capcom plays like Final Fight and whatnot, but it's you know, it's a wrestling game, so it's got this great graphics and that, that great gameplay that was so common with uh, brawlers at the time, but they packaged it all in a wrestling game, which is which is great. And another one that. Just saw it the right price and and just nabbed it, man. It's just and it's a it's a quality title. Very very good, very good game. Yeah, I think we played a bit of. We go straight to international superstar soccer after that, or do we? I can't remember. Now I might have. I don't know. It, we were going when we were playing. We pulled it out and, and started playing that. It was a bit of a bit of a hazy yeah. night, we'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got back from the from the White Caps game. You know, we all you know enjoyed that. Uh, had a few pints down there for that and then got home and then it just continued a few more pints after pints and uh yeah let's get the super nintendo you know just start playing it's it those things that you know <laughs> like when you're a kid and you know your friends and you, you're having a bit of a sleepover and whatnot and you're staying up late and it's like one o'clock in the morning we're still playing and whatnot one eye open yeah yeah it was just a, it was just a good time so there's a lot of, a lot of snes being played and i i'm glad that uh because Joel, you you've uh, ordered the the Mega SG that Analog does, which is their their Mega Drive or, or Genesis for for those of you. So so I'm glad that I was able to to get you some hands on playing it and trying it out before your your Mega Drive shows up. So you get a, get a little bit used to uh, and prepared for what's uh, what you're about to enjoy. Because Analog makes some great products. Can't say can't say enough uh, good about them. Just just quality stuff. I was hovering over, I went after this morning onto the Analog's website and looking at the NT and hovered over the buy button Ooh. a few times. So I, I, after seeing the quality of that console, I'm getting my Mega SG this week. So I'm super excited to get that. I want them both. 
I right? Want, I want both of those. It'd be great to have it under on, on those under the television and have the opportunity to start collecting Genesis and SNES games. Yeah, definitely. I know I got a little um, bookshelf that I, I keep a lot of my games in. You know, I have you know buddies over or whatnot. And it's like the beeline right to it. Like, oh man, you got this game, man. I played it. I've had you know a few few nights people over and you start playing stuff and all of a sudden it's like eleven o'clock, eleven thirty. Say, oh, this, I want to try this one and I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm like, dude, I I gotta go to bed here, man. This this is getting crazy. All right, one more game, one more game. And then again, just sit there and you know, and just play. And it, it's cool to have those. And I th- and I think having both is uh, not a bad idea actually, because uh, you can get a lot of Genesis carts out there, and they're and they're usually pretty well priced, uh, all things considered. So have, having both is, is definitely a good idea, man. I might might be behind you with that. Yeah, if you've got the means, if you've got local shops that have those games, I I see the. Genesis Mini is getting a lot of talk right now on Twitter and in gaming circles, and people are really excited about that. They've been, we've been up here, but I, I see they've released a list of games this week. It's really gaining some momentum. I saw that online for eighty bucks or eighty nine bucks, I think, for the the Genesis Mini. But I'd much rather if I have if you have access to games like we do, I'd much rather have the actual console. Maybe pay a little bit more to pick up those games and collect them, than do that versus having like a Genesis Mini. Much more fun, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of fun to go out there and just kind of dig through, you know, bins and whatnot. And there's, there's still a lot of, you know, those mom and pa used used shops, the retro shops, and you know, it's it, it's part of the fun is just searching for you know for a title or, or whatnot and picking them up, adding them to your collections. It's been it's been a lot of fun for me. And end of the day, is only going to appreciate. You know, you're not going to lose money on this stuff. So if you ever, you ever want to. So your collection at some point you you'd be able to do that and at least break even. So why not? And especially when you got a company like Analog that's doing this, that's preserving, you know, this that that generation, that sixteen bit era, which is one of the one of the best eras in, in video game e- easily. You know, it's it's always gonna be up there. All of us, including, you know, you yourself, you grew up playing video games and, and we all did, and that the sixteen bit is so important. So I, I'm really happy with what Analog's done and just made these these solid premium consoles to be able to, you know, preserve the, all, all these great, great games and play them uh, incredibly well. They, they look great. They sound great. They, so I, I, I'm excited for that. Carl, you went to, I guess, let's close off Side A Video Games with EGX Resed. So right before we all got to you, man, you had a busy couple of weeks, eh? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What's what's some highlights from EGX Rest besides that uh, excellent episode of Entertain Nerds where you guys sound like you had a lot to drink? Yeah, that's that's my fault. To be fair, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rest is the um, the kind of the baby brother, really, of Eurogamer EGX proper that we have in. Uh, it used to be in Birmingham. It's now back down in London, uh, which bit of a pain but there you go and this is it all focuses on indie games and uh, it gives time for all those indie developers to get the games in front of everybody and there's one or two triple a games but not many you know it, it ends up being a little bit uh, just focused on the smaller smaller games which is great you know the queues are really small you don't have to wait to get on stuff and we went down me and carl from the entertainers podcast and we uh, we had some 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 real fun, uh, which ended probably around lunchtime when when I dragged into the pub and we just stayed in there for about yeah four hours, five hours, something like that. But uh, yeah, the, the highlights from from that show for me, we walked straight in, we played some Cuphead on the Switch, which is out now, and uh, and I think we, the three of us will be playing a little bit of this uh, maybe after we've recorded. A it it pretty much is the same as the other console versions. It's perhaps a little bit. Um, Maybe not as bright. I mean, you know, the colours don't pop as much as they do on on you know the PS4 and Xbox One. But other than that, it looks fantastic. You know, you can't really tell the difference um, between uh, between the, the console versions. Obviously, the button layouts are a little bit different, perhaps. But you know, nothing you can't get over. So we jumped straight on that. Still got the mojo. You know, still got the skills. Nice. Yeah. And then uh, I was looking the whole show for the game of the show, which is um, a game that. I absolutely loved last year in my platinum hunt, Cat Quest. Ooh, yes, I, now, I've I've picked that up. I haven't played it. It's uh, yeah, a game, a game with a 
Any game with kitties. Oh, yeah. You got any game with kitties. Yeah, exactly. I don't need <laughs> And it, it, it's super cute. It's like in a little uh, isometric Diablo kind, you know, you, it's a loot-based loot um, RPG. And and it was super cute, super fun. Really, really enjoyed that game. So they had Cat Quest 2. They had the, uh, the, the developers there with that game. So I went down there, and it's more Cat Quest. It's pretty much identical. Uh, Obviously, they've expanded a little bit. The storyline has, uh, has has gone on a different little arc. It's two player now. It's two player co op, and Ooh. it looks to be online and local. So it, I, I played the the local co op with a, a, a dude. I just you know grabbed him. I was like, "You you waiting for the game? You'll play." And uh, I ended up answering a load of questions about Cat Quest for him. I think he, he ended up thinking I worked. I was working the stand. So lots of fun. You know, one of his kitty, one of his doggy. Um, it, it's it's great. It is, they're throwing dogs into the mix as well, so they all get on like a house on fire. Uh, yeah, if you like Cat Quest, you will love Cat Quest too. I, I, I had to stop playing because I didn't want any spoilers, in, you know, for, for when it comes out. But it's coming twenty nineteen. Oh, fantastic, man! Stoked, looking forward to that, especially if a little online co op, buddy. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm looking down. at you. Oh yeah, like literally because we're, <laughs> yeah, in, the cause we're in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. It's great, uh, and if you're a fan of games like Samurai Showdown. Not Samurai Showdown. Tearful Ascension is the game I'm thinking of, and uh, Black and White Bushido, which uh, which is Ooh. nice platinum game. They had a game there called Samurai Gun Two. Uh, never played Samurai Gun, but it's it's a very similar kind of graphic style to Black and White Bushido, and you've got four or five players on screen at one time, and you, you you've got your your sword. You kind of hop around and slash, slash people, kill people, and you've also got like a gun and and little explosive bullets you can kind of fire in three, 360 degrees around you it's mental it's frantic uh, really really good fun like you know if you do like uh, me and the boy play turf all a lot and it's got that kind of frantic multiplayer action going on uh, looked a lot of fun didn't say when it was coming out just said it was in development but I'd imagine also later on this year if if not you know maybe early 2020 but that was great really really good fun my game of the show ended up being a game which is going to hit game pass I think in July uh, it'll be completely free, should you have Game Plus, um, and it's called Supermarket Shriek. It's it, it's kind of like it gives you undertones of Overcooked a little bit. It's a similar similar graphic style. Uh, it's a classic tale of a boy and a goat, and one of you plays the boy, <laughs> one of you plays the goat, um, and they're in a shopping trolley together. And the aim is to steer the shopping trolley around the supermarket, dodging the various pitfalls and, and, and traps and stuff, and get around it in the, in the quickest time. So kind of think like Joe Danger trying to get from beginning to end, dodging all the stuff, and, you know, getting... It's not, not really points-based, but as, as soon as you can, just, you know, a clean run. The unique thing about the game is you use... You've both got a controller each, but you only use the right or the left trigger. Um, one of you, player one, controls the boy and just with the left trigger. The other one controls the goat with the right trigger. And if you press it, you turn that direction. So the boy will turn left, the goat will turn right. If you both press it at the same time, you'll move forward. Uh, the longer and harder you press on the trigger, the more powerful either the turn or the speed of going forward is. So it takes real teamwork just to go in a straight line. So it, it's it that's what makes it so fun. And you end up sharing each other and you know, you have to work together quite well. Um it's a really cute game. It it looked great. It really just played well super, super addictive and, and yeah, free on, on Game Pass and I'm sure the chap said it was coming out in July. So uh certainly third quarter latest. That, that look out for that one on Game Pass. It's it's a lot of fun. It's gonna have online as well, but by all accounts, so sounds like a good couch game though. Mm. Yeah, super, super good for for couch co op. All right, so you you heard it here first. Jewel and Carl coming back when uh, Supermarket Street comes. <laughs> July, nice. What's the weather like here in July? Uh, it'll be a lot better than what it's been this week. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of bummed, but we we made the most of it. It's been kind of off and on rainy. Uh, first couple of days, actually, you know, when it was raining, you know, the clouds parted a bit. Sun came came through, and you know, we made the most of it and had had a great time. I saw some great sights, and then slowly through late late wednesday and uh throughout thursday it uh definitely started to the rains came so is there a mouse back there or something i think it's the fridge oh wow thought we had a little like a uh, little furry friend joining the show here Ooh. for a minute with some tapping over there Ooh, a little tap action <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it for side a video games we're going to enjoy some beers here together with you on the show but if, if you if you like what you hear 
If you're a fan of the show and you've been enjoying what we're, what we're doing, please tell a friend. And go over to our website, abandongamers.com, and join up with the community or join us. You can send us an email. Join the Discord server, which is right down there on the bottom of the page. Or click on any of the social media icons. I'd point you to uh, Instagram first. This, we do a lot. Shane does a lot over there. That's actually a pretty good follow right now. Yeah, definitely. Come on over. Check us out. What do you say we share some beers, gentlemen? Hell yeah. I've got, I've got one lined up here. I've got, I grabbed another one, but I wonder if I should open this 1840, the three of us drink it together, and then maybe Shane, if you want to go to the fridge and grab one of your favorites, and then we all share that and talk about that as well. Ooh. Because yeah. I, I just random let it, I grabbed a Hillbilly Ninja because I haven't had that yet. Oh, but, that'll be fun. Yeah. I and mean, if there's something I, something else in there you'd want us to drink it and talk about on the show, maybe. Well, I'll take a look. Yeah. I, I brought my best 1840 here for starters. Oh, you brought in the heavies right away. I threw it. I threw a couple in the suitcase. We already had one prior. It was the, what did we have the other night? The Italian drinking chocolate. Yeah, Italian drinking chocolate. What did you think of that, Shane? That was dynamite. That was right up my alley. Uh, definitely glad. Um, you, you saved one, brought one all the way out here. And somehow, somehow, he was able to slip it past our crack team of uh, Canadian <laughs> border security. I was able to get that through, so I'm very thankful. Uh, you know, didn't get a... You know, tackled in in the airport or whatnot. So yeah, but yeah, very 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 delicious, right up my alley. I love a, you know a, a, a great stout, and eighteen forty makes a damn good stout. I almost got tackled in the airport. <laughs> really, you almost yeah. got you almost got tackled here in the room by your allergies. Yeah, that's true. Actually. Yeah, that uh, Italian oh, drinking yeah, chocolate. We almost we almost killed him with a hint of hazelnut. Thanks, yeah. thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> and eighteen forty have been like cheering all my all my ta- my check ins on Untapped. And I'm, you know, I might have to message him again, like, you know, just, just add the word hazelnut into that Italian hazelnut drinking chocolate. That'd be great. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I only had a tiny sip and I think, and I think it's fine. It's probably one of these where they have like a, a bag of hazelnuts in a massive vat and they just, you know, they put them in, they pull them out. So luckily there was no allergy for me, but, uh, it, it, the, it, it did taste really good. And I, I really wish that I could have had a bit more, but it just it wasn't worth it. You know, it wasn't worth risking death for. To be fair, um, no, definitely not. At least wait till you're back home before you die. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, and, we'd have to drag you out in the street here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be a Vancouver <laughs> statistic, do I? I think you'd go on the green recycle bin, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Yeah, yeah that's pretty organic. That beard's organic. <laughs> I did have the vanilla drinking chocolate though when I was in uh, Milwaukee, and that was that was superb. Really, really good. And then you looked it up, right? Did that that one did not. That have was hazelnuts. okay. No hazelnuts in that one. Well, we're reading the bottle. We're we're all enjoying an Italian drinking chocolate. And I'm just reading the ingredients, and I say hazelnut, and Carl's like, "Oh, <laughs> as the as the glass <laughs> is touching my lips, and like, oh, <laughs> it's all good. It's okay. all good." So I just poured the other 1840 I brought, which is cashmere sweater IPA. And this is a, man, I, I need glasses, but it's a hop bursted, double dry hopped exclusively with cashmere hops. So I poured us each a little bit. This is bottled back on 2.7, so it's probably about time we get this one finished. My last cashmere sweater. Carl, you had one of these at, at my house already, so you, you've had a taste of this. But let's, let's toast first. Let's do a chink. What? Can you, uh, we're, all, we're all wired up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Come on, you had to get that on mic, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. of course. Yeah, it's not too many opportunities, so. So uh, give it a taste, gents. Oh, man. Shane, this is your first time, so we'll have you give your reaction first. All right, let's do this. The silence you hear is Shane drinking it. I had to go in for for a second sip. That was very good. There's the bottle. That was very very good. Yeah, definitely got that fruitiness. You get that citrus, all all the all the stuff that you get out of a lot of uh, double dry hop, a lot of IPAs. Definitely have that. But I'm surprised it 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 tastes a bit heavy. Yeah. To to me, yeah, it's it's a heavy for for beer. Yeah, for a Double dry hop, usually, you know, they're, you know, a little bit lighter, full of that, you know, tangerine, you know, a lot of citrus in there, but, you know, peach, you, you get out of it. But this is like. You get the peach in this one, I think, quite a bit, like a oh, passion yeah. fruit. Yeah. 
as well. Peach and passion fruit on the nose. It's a nice thick one. Nice thick one where you can have, I don't know how many of them. I would like Let's to see, find uh, out how. Check the alcohol content on the front of that bottle. I mean, it's just a seven. Yeah, seven. seven. Yeah, just a seven. <laughs> well, I'm just saying because because at 1840, the other one I had was what 11, 12, and I know. Yeah, Jules mentioned a lot of the 1840s, and they're usually eight, nine, ten, eleven, in and around there. Definitely a, a definitely a, a, the brewing beers where you can sit down and have a, a full pint. You know, sip it, enjoy it, good conversation, good friends, and, and you know, not, not for, you know, sitting at home playing video games and I'm going to, you know, have four or five of them, right? And I, and I, li- and I like that about them. That's kind of where I think where my, my taste buds are going with, uh, with beer now is getting to the point where just getting to the, finding those beers where after having one, you know what, I'm good. Yeah, I'm feeling good. It's yeah. got a nice, you know, alcohol content to it. You know, turn the brain off, relax, but full of flavor. Where I, you know, and a little bit heavy, just like this. And then this is where, where I'm going with the heavy stuff to just enjoy. You know, one really good beer in, in an evening, and and I think that's spot on. And I think uh, this is the second eighteen forty I have, but they're damn good. They're, they're brewing damn good beer down there, and it's it, it's fantastic. And I'm I'm very grateful and very thankful to be able to to enjoy these. So yeah, it's got that nice Seinfeld reference in the cashmere sweater label, as well, like the font, almost looks like, looks like Seinfeld. Yeah, it almost took that that Seinfeld logo that you'd see and really really use that to the to the advantage of this, and it's 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 fantastic. I've had a lot of 1840 beers, so I'm lo- lucky to live close enough to the place. But this is probably top two, really for me. This cashmere sweater, I'd put it up against pillow top. It'd be like a, a battle between those two for my favorite. But I, I really like this beer yeah, a lot. Yeah, this is they. They went. I think I ordered like twelve of them, and they went quick. <laughs> I, this was the last one, hmm. and it doesn't taste like a seven percent either. No, it's dangerously smooth. So it's heavy. You, you said heavy, like in thickness, not yeah, not like texture, in the. Though. In the texture hop. in the yeah not not in the hop or Almost anything like, like a, that it's like really really smooth mm. but it has that it has that bit of weight to it you can tell there's something there you know that's like it's not like a you know not like a you know normal ipa that you would have where it's just like really bitter really hoppy or anything like that yeah. no this is this is really smooth but there's there's definitely some some density to it some some weight to it and it's it's bang on it's delicious i'm, I'm just gonna i'm gonna nurse the rest of this <laughs> Carl and I are uh, we slammed ours. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I think this this was the. Uh, I think was it the first one I tried when I came to yours. I can't. I'm, I'm it, it might have been because it's the one I hoisted up as as. Yeah. As far as like checking out an 1840 for the first time, I think it's the one I gave you first. Yeah. And and I've been to some great breweries, obviously Milwaukee and and now here in Vancouver, um, Parallel and Parkside. Been. Just fantastic beers, isn't it? Oh man, that was a, that was a good time at Parkside, man. Yes, yeah. it was. That's a good beer yeah. too. Yeah, that little bench with all the, the, the four little tasters in that that thing's brilliant. You know, it gives you a nice little range of beers. Um, that's eighteen forty. Um, Cashmere sweater is my favourite uh, of all the beers I've had so far on on, on this journey, and. They've all been brilliant. They've all been like you know nine out of ten, with with the exception of a couple of, of iffier ones. But you know Eagle Park, eight and forty, Parallel Parkside, yeah, all been superb. Um, that that cashmere sweater is just a little bit special. There's something to it. To me. There's, yeah, yeah, it has that. There's something to it when you when you try it and you drink it and you get that that sip and you it's yeah, it's all like the um, stuff, man. So as I look around to see what what, what we're having next, but. What, there's one that you that you bought with you that we tried, um, and it's it's close beyond that. Really, it's pretty superb. Uh, and Joel's got a can of it in his hand right oh, now. No. All right. Oh yeah. Oh, you can. I went to the fridge and hooked you up, Shane, with a bunch of different beers to choose from for us to drink next. Oh man. And there, I've I've had one or two of these already. <coughs> We've got a, a synth wave, which is what Boombox Brewing. Yes, sir. Right here, we've got a. Double dry hopped IPA beer, mental floss, 
this is the beers the brewery right yeah beer brewing yeah and then we've got a russian imperial stout extra strong beer ten and a half percent who is this by Par- oh, parallel yeah parallel it's one of their, 49 yeah one of their aged ones which uh yeah ten and a half i mean we, <laughs> we still gotta go out later <laughs> uh i could have a sip yeah. Any, anything you want to choose here? And I've got another Parallel 49 here. The Hillbilly Ninja, which same guy that drew our logo. I love the artwork on this can, especially. It's probably my favorite. It's ice. Out of all of them. It's exactly as you would imagine a Hillbilly Ninja looking like. <laughs> it is. He really. He's got like a banjo there, doesn't he? Yeah. He kind of <laughs> saloon across with the, you know, the ninja wrap around, around his uh Around his, you know, the bottom part of his mouth and whatnot, with a, you know, a bit of a straw hat on there, and he's getting ready to go a ninja on some feller that don't need a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to make you make you rush through that eighteen forty. Sorry, brother. No, it's all good. That is, it's just so good. Such such good beer, man. You're 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 definitely coin a sewer. Well, he's that too. <laughs> <laughs> He's very very lucky to be to be in an area to have a, a great brewery like that. Um, yeah, yeah. They, 1840 gets the beer from somebody else. They get the wort from somebody else. They ferment it, I think, there, and then barrel age it all. Nice. So they're not even actually a brewery, but so good, man. So good. And every week they come out with more. This week it, it's, it's a joint IPA, I think it was called. It's a collab between Eagle Park and 1840. So Shea pre-ordered six of those, and I get to go home to those. Nice. I'm pretty excited for that. Eagle Park also is making some really good beer. Oh, yeah. And they had some good food there. We went and had dinner there on Saturday night? Yeah, Saturday yeah, night. Yeah, Saturday. MGC. Yeah, what? that's a great place, that is. It's, got, it's, it's a, unique. It's got a little ambiance to it, and uh, some really good – we had a really good uh, citra on the dock of the bay, I think it was. Yep. That was that was super nice, and uh, yeah, the food was great. The atmosphere in there was good, and I feel I feel like I'm missing out. You know, we coming to see you guys. You've got these great like micro breweries which are kind of set up, and you've you've got food in there or food courts outside. You know, you've got like loads of these tables and benches set out, and everyone's just chilling, enjoying, and the variety of beers is insane. You know, and we don't have that really. Like craft beer is a thing. And we have a lot of selections of things bought in, like cans bought around. We've got good breweries, you know, Tiny Rebels, one of my favourite in Wales. And, uh, you know, Brewdog do a lot of stuff, but they're not really a brewery. Brewery, Like, you can't pop in and, you know, see see the vats there and, you know, and experience that. And I love that. I love, you know, going around and seeing that you guys are, you know, lucky to have that stuff. And they're like these craft breweries too are like little neighbourhood pubs as well. Like Eagle Park, I think, is a really good example of that. Oh, yeah, I like the sound of that. And 1840, right? Whew. Just kind of right in a neighborhood. And you kind of have regulars in there. Yeah. I mean, we were at 1840, and how many people walked up like, hey, how's it going? Oh, loads, hey. yeah. Just, you run into all your friends when you go to these places. And Eagle mm-hmm. Park, a gallon, or PJs. Yeah. Just stumbled in. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's a neighborhood pub. Just, yeah, totally. Just roll in and have a beer. Yeah, it seems to be the thing is having these you know breweries kind of open up with their what they call tasting rooms and whatnot where... We we're, were at Parkside, and this dude comes in, and he's got his dogs with him. He's just out walking his dogs, and you know, there there he is, brings them in. And, and Parkside's really really great when it comes to uh, they get they got an outside patio, and they bring the dogs in. And right yeah. right when the guy behind the bar or uh, doing the taps uh, sees that, he's got two dog bowls filled with water and right yeah, out man. to him, and, and the dogs just you know their eyes just lit up, right? It's just. They do really, really great things, and it, it also brings the community together in those those areas as well, which is which is also important. So, I get, I get to do the honors here. So, get your fresh glass, mate. No, I'm good. I'm good. No, Shane. Actually, yeah. If you yeah. don't mind, this is a nice sized, nice sized bottle here. Yeah, 500 milliliters. Yeah, so this will be uh, Parallel 49's Russian Imperial Stout. They they do these every every year. They do them. They're they're barrel aged. Um, what kind of barrels it is? It says on the side of the bottle, which we'll look at after. Oh uh, yeah, I can look here. Thank you, sir. Uh, maybe okay. the other side. I'll, I'll have you look at it. <laughs> I don't see what kind of. It doesn't aged. 
aged in rye whiskey barrels for two months, it says. Ooh. Oh, fuck <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's a really nice uh, Imperial Stout. I've, had, I've only had it once before. They do, with some of their barrel aged stuff, They what they do is they kind of go outside. They're, they're known for, for their artwork and whatnot, but for these, they kind of do like a, a bit more of a old school kind of paper label on there. It looks, you know, a bit more like hand drawn and whatnot on there. And then they, they, they cork, they cork them as well. Uh, hand corked and let's, full of deliciousness. Let's take a few minutes here before we drink that, because I gave Shane a really bad pour. I'm sorry, Shane. No, no, no. <laughs> look, at, look at the head on that thing. Oh, it's gorgeous. That's bad. Nah. Let that settle down a little bit. This, have you had one of these before? Uh, just once, yeah, and it was uh, quite a few months ago. I'm assuming this is one of their limited releases. Yeah, well, it was a limited one, uh, but I made sure to grab a couple bottles so uh, when my boys were out here, they can try some of these uh, some of these good beers. So excellent. Yeah, definitely, definitely made sure the the fridge was stocked for you guys because there's there's so many in there. Oh, that you did, that yeah. you did. <laughs> and they're kind of they're kind of seasonal, so it's like you you got to try this beer, you know, but. I don't know if it's going to be around, so I would stock up and just grab a bunch just in case. And yeah, then I think I think we made it all right. Yeah, man, appreciate yeah. that, man. We've got, we've had some great beers here. Oh yeah, I'm really proud of Eagle Park and 1840 and all the great beers I can get over by me. But I, I have to say, Shane, you're you've got some good beers here. They 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 compete right up with all the good ones in Milwaukee. They really do, man. It's Damn, some yeah. great great beers. Yeah, it's a, a lot of passion. You you can tell in 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 brewing in, in the, you know, the Milwaukee breweries with, uh, you know, what I've had so far and what they do out here. There's a lot of people that, you know, care about the industry and it, it shows in the quality of their beers. I wish they were all down the street from our place here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely would be nice. Stagger back. That'd yeah. be great. <clears throat> let's give this, let's give this a poll, huh? Mm-hmm. Any hazards in the brewing of this particular beer? <laughs> just, you know, just, just, just as I would say before we drink the stout, I'm sure there isn't. In the 18th century, this bold, strong stout was brewed in London for the very long and treacherous trip to the imperial courts of Russia. In keeping with this... Oh, great, right, now I'm going to butcher a bunch because i got a bit of Russian... There's no hazelnuts and stouts typically, right? That was just a special thing in uh, that. Yeah, no. I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> Whiskey barrel I'm aged. Sure you're fine. Imperial has aromas of dried fruit, oak, vanillas, and notes of dark chocolate roasted coffee which uh, old Finsky here all like, and a hint of rye spice. Yeah, it didn't look like... Oh, now it's got the ingredients. I should have just looked there. <laughs> uh, well, chocolate crystal, well, it's I don't want to spoil it for these guys. You allergic to uh, fuggles? No, fuggles. fuggles are fine. Okay, there you go. Fuggles and muggles, I'm all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it looks like we're all good. So he's not going to die on this Fantastic. show. Fantastic. Maybe the next one. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe 190. <laughs> Ooh, you really get the coffee in that one. Mm. Get a lot of that, that rye flavor, that spice. Oh, yeah, that spice aftertaste. Mm. Yeah, good point. I, the first, first initial sip was coffee, but then you're getting that barrel on the back end. Second sip, it really yeah. got it stronger. Almost... Um, Brown sugar taste mm. to me, a little bit. I'm not saying there's brown sugar in there, but that's kind of the flavor profile I get on that second sip. Very smooth, like a stout, a good stout. Mm. Man, that's delicious. Yeah, it's super nice. It, it, what percentage is this one? 10.5. 10.5. Yeah, that doesn't taste like a 10.5 no, either. Not. That's super dangerous. Like the... <laughs> You can taste the potency in the, the drinking chocolate. I don't get a potency from that. I love the way the head turns a real nice, like, yellow, as well as it mixes in, and that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, super tasty. Yeah, real, the real dark, it's got a lot of nice caramel cover, like a like a good stout does. Mm. And they're, they're, uh, they do Russian Imperial Stouts every year, and... A lot of people have been very much into aging beers. You buy a beer and just let it sit for you know a year or two and whatnot. I have a Russian Imperial and Stout at home from 2016 hmm. that I'm just kind of sitting on because every year, every year they taste it a little bit different. 
they're they're different. Every year you can tell, okay, something's different here, right? It's just the you know the nature of the beast, and this is uh, uh, 2019's uh, version of it, and it's been very very popular for them. They've done them every year that they've been open, and they're they're always a hit. And now they're age barreling them. It's dynamite. I kind of feel it going right to my eyes. You kind of feel your eyes get that heaviness behind them from drinking yeah. a potent drink. They look almost like a whiskey. All right. Yeah. There That's- is in that spice. There is a bit, a tiny hint of that, like it, that you would get after. It. I was trying to think of it until you just mentioned whiskey. Yeah, you. T- I can taste the barrel in this. Yeah. You said it was barrel aged, or the bottle reads for two months, but it, man, I would have guessed like six months. Right. Yeah. yeah. A lot of yeah. a lot of that barrel flavor in there. Maybe the barrels were used for many years, like a, a barrel that's been used quite a few times for quite- rye whiskey. Oh, would, yeah. would have more soaked into the wood. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that's uh, eighteen forty puts a lot of value in the barrels they buy because a good barrel can make a big difference. You know, oh beer. yeah, like every having everything. A, yeah. yeah, having a, a barrel that's been like they've got some wine barrels they use for some aging that's been Ooh. in circulation for years and years and years. And the types of wood too is important, especially in in barreling like a wine. The type of wood you use, I would say the you, you taste the wood in here. That barrel wood, it's kind of a good, it's a good flavor. Yeah, definitely it's a superb type. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, it's decent. Yeah. Huh? Wonderful. If we weren't going for dinner, we could drink like three or four different more beers, right? Definitely. <laughs> we will have to save that till uh, you know after the show when we're we're you know back at the house here. Should yeah. we leave all this equipment hooked up and maybe? Ooh, whoa. Maybe enjoy a couple more later. It's quite that's, possible. That's, that's great. Let her yeah. roll. Yeah. Potentially have some more content at a different time, Ooh. or no. bonus content, or something. I'll be down. Yeah, episode one ninety. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, guys? You want to do a little bit of side B music? Maybe just pick a record for next time. Think you can handle that? Oof. I, I yep. don't know about a record right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, this like because uh, we recorded a couple weeks back. Now and it's it's flown by so fast. It has. This week has gone by so fast. Uh, well, the I, anticipation leading up to coming out here. Yeah, we were counting the sleeps down, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no. And once Carl and I got together in Milwaukee, it was like we immediately missed Shane, and it, Shane was like, "What's up? Where you at? Where you? What you guys doing? What's going, what's, what's going on? What's going on?" Because just we're so excited to all get together. We were trying to include you as much as we could. And I was trying to be a part of it, like so much, just even through text. Hey, what are you, what are you guys up today? Hey, what are you drinking? You know, oh, you send me pics, send me pics. I want to see it. I want to, yeah, you know, be involved. And uh, it's it's a testament to you know a lot a lot of podcasters out there and everybody and, and great friends and all. And but but it's something to say. I think I think we we definitely have something special with the three of us. And oh yeah, yeah, we do. And it just it makes it so much better when you can. Just be in the same room, you know what I mean? And just just hang out and do things together. And just be around each other, you know, even if it's just chill. But it, it all adds to the, you know, the dynamic. That's great. S- smell each other's farts. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah, and listen to the, the, the subtle tones of the different, you know, different snores. But Yeah. <laughs> Should record those later, eh? Hey? Oh, God. <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't be hard. Yeah. You could set it up at your age and still hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, are we recommending an album or not? What we gonna do? I I wouldn't even have one at the moment. I could f- think of to recommend. I, I've got one, and that's the Budos Band Five. Oh yeah, I'd recommend. I'd recommend that one. I've only heard it once with you guys while we were here. It came out on Friday while we were at MGC. The album sitting at on my kitchen table. I think my wife told me, "Tough. I'm not waiting. I'm going to listen to it," which <laughs> I, I respect. Normally, we'd wait and listen to it together. So I haven't heard the the record. We we jammed the MP3s once through yesterday, and mm. I'm confident on that yeah. record already. I think that sounds pretty good, instrumental. Yeah. So I would I would recommend that one. What else you guys got? Just the album I keep listening to all over and over, which I'll probably play for you two later. Um, melodic death metal. It's Soil Works uh, Verkleiten. I think that's the correct pronunciation. So. Um, it's it's superb in my, in my humble opinion, but um, I'd I'd throw that up there. But after hearing yours earlier on, Joel, I am curious to give that a few more listens. Yeah. To be fair, 
I'm I'm with Carl on that. It was, it was a real kind of quick listen. We we, mm. we had a little bit of time to kill, and that, and we had that going. But yeah, I think it deserves a bit more in depth than uh, our expert opinions. Yeah. All right. So next episode, one ninety, the Budos Band. It's B U D O S. If you want to look it up, and the album's five. They've named all their albums one, two, three, four, five. I think four might have had a subtext subtitle to it, but otherwise they're just they're numbered. And I'm a fan of the Budos Band. It's on the Daptone Records label, and they man they they're on fire. They're putting out some great stuff like the Mystery Lights and of course Sharon Jones, and the Dap Kings and Budos Band is like Mexican. Would you, uh, Carl said it was Bond music yesterday, yeah, like almost, Bond music, and I'd say with like a Mexican yeah it was like spice a, a, to it, kind of anthemic, you know, and, and very. The mix of instrumentation, you know, very almost orchestral kind of, but like with that kind of funk, uh, and kind of a Mexican vibe to it, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Another great episode. It's kind of, we dropped a digital recorder between us the other night. We were watching the, was it the, what were we watching? Uh, Basketball game? Toronto Raptors, maybe? Ice hockey or... Yeah. It was, no, it was Raptors, yeah. Yeah, it was a Raptors and game. And then maybe a hockey game after. And we had, yeah. that was like dynamite recording right there. We had some really good stuff. <laughs> them up, just dropping a digital recorder in the room. But when we sat to mix it down yesterday morning, the, the TV was kind of loud and it just doesn't, it didn't sound the best. So maybe we'll try and grab some more audio later. I don't know. It's It's been a good week. I've had a blast. Yeah. It's yeah. Sad for it to come to an end here tomorrow. Yeah. But we got a whole night yet. <laughs> To hang out, guys. Yeah, oh shit! Yeah. One more night. One more night. One Ten more nights. Ten more nights. I'm gonna phone work. Hold on. <laughs> right. Yes. <Yeah. laughs> Ref, you suck. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Get out and stay out. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you everybody for listening. We appreciate it. You guys are the best. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Being there with us for this, all of us together. I feel special to have the listener here with us. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Until next time, take care. Get some games, eh? <laughs> enjoy your games, eh? Yeah. Enjoy your games, eh? Yeah. Okay. It's our new. Uh, I will, eh? Close the show. Uh, yeah, man, tagline when, when we when we shut her down. Now, enjoy your games, eh? Enjoy them games, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the first A I got all week. Yeah. Oh, and, and a damn good one. Yeah. No special. They should have hugged her. Oh, yeah. She she can pump them all with the best of Snore though, I bet. Right? Just a clear path to his the brain. Thing, there'd be nothing. Yeah. No, there'd be just be mouth breathing, right? <laughs> Not the old nose. Mouth breathing. Mouth breathing. There's a few of them MGC. Yeah. Those are Actually, at the uh, Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo that they do. Like, well, they do Seattle, Portland, I think. And it says right in the rules, please don't be smelly. Yeah. Like, right in the, right in the rule book. Do they enforce it at the door? Like, have a, have a girl no. there? Like, Well, even last year when I was there, there's a couple. Uh, Arms up to the sky. Oh. Just got a couple of, uh, you know, lights all can. Yeah. A couple of axes. Oh, I'm going to need you to go back out and put the pit stick on and come back. Hey, Bill, run down to Shoppers. We need more axe. Just two guys no falling smelly. around. <laughs> no. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> last week, they did walk in. Like, when's the last time you showered? Did you so? Radiant season proof. Have you used deodorant? What? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah.
along with Warren Leonard, How much? Uh, really made a difference in uh, handing out those little, uh, you know, the travel size anti Yeah. You get like a bag when you walk in the door, granola bar, <laughs> travel pit stick. <laughs> Well, uh, some of these guys you can get a fucking paint roller out. Tom's paint roller. <laughs> Drag them outside, hose them down. <laughs> they got like a bucket of paint there. <laughs> Deodorant. <laughs> Take your arms off. Just get a jet wash. It's like a bashy. No, oh, man. There was one dude when we sat at the desk and he kind of walked past. And it was cheering for us. It was what really made by too much. Yeah. Put his arms up in the air and knocking us like a bouquet. It just popped out of his arm like just a massive, just underarm hair. And I was like, oh. he's wearing like an NBA. Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Tiny yeah. little bit and just lift his arm. It's like that. Like with a seventeen tarantulas, all just having orgy. He's <laughs> fucking armpit. Right. Like, was a, at a certain, a mess, yeah. At a certain age, you got to realize. That you're a bit more endowed in yeah. the armpit hair that you think yeah. you'd be like, hey, you know, I'm just gonna tidy that shit up. Yeah. You know, just tidy it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, most people don't. Armpit hairs aren't there. Nobody cares. Right. Some of these guys. Yeah, I mean, do you at least look at it? Look yeah. No, yeah, like, that's a bit. Extreme. Exactly. Throw your pit in the mirror. Just take a take a peek. Like these old guys, and they get those they get those spiders on their mm-hmm. their their, <laughs> their eyebrows. <laughs> Yeah, you just, just take, just take pair of scissors. Yeah, just tie that. Right? Trimmers. Same thing you use for your beard. Just trim your eyebrows. Take two minutes. That's what my hair lady does. So you don't mind, do you? I'm like, no, please, really. Hey man, I'm not offended. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't want tarantulas up there. Yeah. You see any other spots that are awkward? Yeah, man, it takes trimmers. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Hold on. Hair should be here. Yeah. How the ears look? Ears look alright. Yeah. I can't see back there. <laughs> Pull it out. Like Lulu. Mm. Lulu's got the old man in your hair. Yeah. Coming out all white, like sticking straight out. Oh, bless her. <laughs> there must be an idea. You don't give a shit. There must be that. I'm not there yet. It's coming up soon. <laughs>